Welcome to the introduction to FlowGo. In this video, we will give you an overview of FlowGo and how it works. FlowGo is an open core product based on Project FlowGo that enables developers to easily build microservices, serverless functions, event-driven apps, integrations, and APIs using a web-based UI tailored to the needs of its users. You have the flexibility to deploy your FlowGo apps anywhere in containers, as serverless functions, as static binaries on an IoT Edge device, or to TIBCO Cloud if you are using the developed capability of TIBCO Cloud integration. So how does FlowGo work? It has a powerful programming model based on triggers and actions. A trigger receives events from external sources or commands from clients and uses the respective flow handler to pass the data from the event to the right flow. The flow is a group of different activities that will process the received events. To help you understand those concepts better, I will explain each of them from the web UI so that you can see how FlowGo works. Here is the FlowGo app list, which is the first page you will see when you open up the web UI, with all the apps I've created so far. Let's see what a typical FlowGo app looks like. For example, let's open the Getting Started Tutorial app. This is a very simple mock web app example that retrieves flight booking data based on a last name. A Flogo app contains triggers to receive events. In this app, I have a receive HTTP message trigger. Each trigger has a configuration window that you can open to modify its settings, such as the port for the HTTP listener. At this level, these are the settings that apply to the trigger in general. For example, this listener is on port 9999. From the flow definition, you can set values that are specific to that flow. If we navigate to the flow and open the trigger, we can see specific values, in this case the value of the HTTP method and path. A flow can be started by multiple triggers. Let's add a second trigger to see what's available. Firstly, we get the option to start this flow from one of the existing triggers. We'll ignore that and add a new one. Flogo offers a wide selection for out-of-the-box triggers that you can choose from, as well as a range of connectors to receive events from a variety of external systems. We have messaging options, for example, Kafka or MQTT. We have environment triggers like Lambda, where the Flogo app is running in a serverless environment, or an S3 trigger to handle S3 specific events. We even have custom triggers like the UDP message trigger that I've written and added myself. Let's go back to the flow view and add a new trigger and flow. Click on create to open the flow trigger creation window. Select trigger and scroll through the triggers. All you have to do is select the trigger you want to use and it will get added to your app. In this case, I'm going to pick the Kafka trigger. At this point, it needs to know about the connection details for the Kafka server. This is done via a connection definition that has all of the required parameters. All I do is just select the name of the connection and click Create. This has added the trigger without an associated flow. I'll click in and add a flow. When I click on Continue, it asks me if I want to copy the trigger inputs and outputs to the flow definition. Normally you want to do this so that all the values from the trigger are available in the flow. If you only want to use a few of them, then just add the trigger and do the rest manually. In this case, I'm going to copy. This will show me the slide out of the flow input and I can verify it's what I wanted. If I choose, I can make changes manually. You can now see that the trigger is flagged. Let's look at why. On the trigger settings tab, there is a red cross and this is because a required field is missing. In this case, it's the group ID, but let's fill in the topic and the group ID in any case. Next, look at the Map to Flow Inputs tab. This is the field mapper that's used in a number of places within the UI. We shall select an input field, and this will show us what we can map it to. Let's expand the trigger output, and we can click a trigger field to map it. We could also use functions to apply some mapping logic. Let's say that we wanted to pass to the key 
input values from the input key, partition and offset. We will use the string concat function. We can type concat and it starts suggesting matching function names. Or we could have expanded the function list and found it that way. Highlighting the first argument, we can then select the trigger key value, highlight the second and assign the partition value. At this point we have an error and that's because the concat function expects its arguments to be strings so we need to convert it to a string. The coerce functions will do that for us. We can select to string and then map the value for our partition. Let's do the same for offset. Now we have mapped the trigger to the flow and you can start creating your flow logic. Let's go back and look at an existing flow, the HTTP trigger that we started with. So here, attached to my trigger is the flow. This flow gets run every time the trigger it's attached to receives an event. Each flow contains one or more activities to implement your business logic. We call this the flow designer view, as this is where you build the business logic for your Flowgo app. The data passed in the flow input can now be used by any activity of this flow. All the tiles you see are activities. Each of them performs specific tasks within my flow and they have a configuration window specific to that type of activity. This is a log activity that will output a log message when the log level is set to info. The message is formatted in the mapper, in this case a string and a value from the input data. This is the first activity that will be executed. Attached to the activity are two branches. As you can see, activities are linked in order to facilitate flow of data between them and can contain conditional logic using branches. This branch will run if the condition is matched. Here we need to create a condition that results in a Boolean value. Here I have a function that will return true if the value in the field matches the string. Here the logic is slightly different. This branch will only run if no other branch is true. Once the logic has been built, each flow can be run under the tester. You will need a launch configuration. I have two set up already. Each configuration allows you to specify different input data to test different conditions. Click Next. This shows you the input data payload. Click Run to start the test. You can now click on each activity to see the inputs and the outputs. Once you have built and tested all your flows, you can now build the app for its target platform. The Build button shows you what platforms are supported out of the box. We have now covered the main concepts of Flowgo. To sum up, this is the app creation process in Flowgo. First create an app, then start with a flow or start with a trigger. Add activities to the flow and configure them to build your business logic. Add more triggers and more flows as required. Test your app, build your app for its target platform and deploy. Let's look at some advanced concepts. Properties can be used to assign values in various places, for example as an argument to a function or an activity setting. The property definer allows you to structure your properties into groups and assign default values which can be overwritten at runtime via property managers or environment variables. Schemas allow you to define data formats that are used in multiple places in your app. This means you have a consistent definition used everywhere. Connections hold connection specific values that can be reused in or across apps. These will be things like host names, user IDs, passwords. Extensions are a key part of the Flogo architecture. These are user or community created features that provide additional functionality that's not part of the core product or that are specific to a use case. Thanks for watching this video. Check out our other videos on our YouTube channel.